Winter is coming. Batten down the hatches. Stormborn Game of Thrones Season 7 Episode 2. Let's see if I can even keep track of everything that went on in this. Let's start at the beginning and before I get into spoilers because I'm going to get into them quickly. Good stuff. Better than the previous episode. To reiterate, I did not dislike the previous episode, but it was dull and just seemed to be about establishing where everybody is. Now, this one, not a ton happened until kind of towards the end, but it was more active because instead of just characters standing around reminding us all who they are, what they want, and what's in their way, we see them start to scheme and make plans, and that is way more interesting. So we get a lovely bit of scheming and some back and forth, and we get to feel the dynamic of Daenerys and her sort of cadre of support that she's built up. I love that she calls out Varys for his shifting loyalties. I love that he comes right back at her with his reasoning for it. Love that entire exchange. I like Tyrion's plan. It made a lot of sense. I, and then I love that with one line, Elena Terrell undermines all of it just by saying, I've known a lot of clever men and I outlived them because I didn't listen to them. I love her so much. She's so awesome. I like that John seems to be playing it smart and he's not doing what Rob did, which is being noble, but stupid. So John seems to be making the best choice he can under the circumstances with the information he has. I am slightly nervous about the fact that he left Sansa in charge because what I do not want to have happen, but I will not be surprised if it does, is that for whatever reason, Sansa can't run stuff. Either people aren't listening to her, she gets overwhelmed, who knows what, and then she goes running to Littlefinger for help and then we're all screwed. I am really, really hoping that is not where they go with her, but we had a nice little reminder from Theon that sometimes people don't overcome their damage and... That was a really sad moment. I, at this point, I do genuinely feel bad for Theon because for what he's been through and what he was facing at that moment, I can't say I blame him jumping off that boat. Euron is turning out to be a bigger player in all of this than I'd have figured. I think he's go he might end up being a bit of a wild card. He's doing way more damage than I thought he was gonna do. So that, that can throw a wrench into things that I mean that and that that's one of the things that's cool about this episode we see people lay plans and then we see them completely fall apart because of this one guy that they hadn't counted on I like how Circe sort of frames the the issue of Daenerys coming back she's really good at spinning it and making Daenerys look like the bad guy and all of this that works really well I'm kind of torn on Ser Jorah coming back and that whole thing. I'm gonna wait and see how it pays off. Right now I'm iffy on it and here's the reason why. I really liked the idea that how we saw him exit when he left the show previously was gonna be the last time we saw him because there was something sweetly tragic about that, that he was basically going off to die and there was nothing he was gonna be able to do about it, but that Daenerys, by giving him that mission, get yourself cured, gave him a purpose. So in my mind, it was this wonderful poetic thing that he was still gonna die, but he was gonna die with purpose, trying to serve the woman he loved. So the fact that he might actually survive, I don't know. Again, I'll see how it pays off. I'll see if, if bringing him back mines something that I like more than when I thought he wasn't coming back. Um, so we'll see. That was, oh boy. Sam, props on you, Sam, for you know stepping up to actually do that job because um, Also, in Old Town, we got a little bit more Jim Broadbent. I think I actually forgot to talk about Jim Broadbent last time, and I'm always glad to have him. I've never not liked Jim Broadbent. I've liked him in everything I've seen, even movies that I've hated. <coughs> Moulin Rouge. <coughs> um, but he is always good, and he, just, he is wonderful at being just charmingly pompous, which is a weird thing to be able to pull off, but he can do it very well. The whole thing with Grey Worm and Sandy was fine. I suppose it was the obligatory nudity for the show, and I'm not exactly complaining about that. But uh, at the same time, I you know, you follow my channel, you know that romantic subplots are not not exactly my favorite thing in the world, but it didn't drag it down too much, and it was something that it's been built up to this point. Arya has some interesting moments. Hot Pie came back! That actually made me really, really happy. And I love that he's still sweet, 
and she just doesn't know how to deal with the fact that he's sweet. That's just, that's just nice. And then the whole Nymeria thing I really like too. Um, and I know that, you know, she has a, a moment at the end where it makes you wonder, was that really, was it not? Regardless of whether it was, I think it was. Um, it was a nice moment and I enjoyed that. I find it interesting that she is headed back to Winterfell and I guess it was also a reminder of, because it's, it's one of those things you forget because everyone has to communicate through ravens and if nobody else knows where you are, you're not going to get the information. So I forget who does and doesn't know what and it hadn't occurred to me that she didn't realize that the Boltons were out of Winterfell at this point. So the fact that she's now gotten this information and she's turning around and heading back to Winterfell, that's interesting because it seems like she's, I'm not going to say abandoning her quest for vengeance, but she's shifting her priorities. She has decided it is more important to reunite with the family that she still has than to seek revenge. And she's not as single-minded as it was looking like she might end up being. And Maybe that's even a way for her to have redemption. I don't mean redemption like, oh, she she did horrible things by killing Walder Frey. Walder Frey deserved to die. But she's she's very damaged and very dangerous at this point. So, you know, maybe maybe there's a shot at, uh, at a happier ending for her. Because I've already kind of predicted that things cannot end well for her. But uh, we'll see you as far as that goes. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, given the track record of every time she tries to get to place the where theoretically she'll be safe, it goes horribly wrong right before she gets there. Maybe this is a bad omen. I guess that's about it. Uh, we had a bit of death, a bit of very bloody violence, and I guess we lost some of the sand snakes. It's hard for me to care. I don't, I don't, I don't care about Dorne. I never, ha I liked Oberon. That's it. Everything else having to do with Dorne, I just don't care. But we'll see where it goes. We'll see if it pans out. We'll see what it leads to. Maybe, again, maybe like with Ser Jorah, it'll eventually land at a payoff that'll justify its inclusion or re-inclusion or whatever, but uh, it ain't there yet. But overall, I liked this episode a lot. And even, it didn't have to be chock-a-block full of action for, or death for it to just move the story forward a lot more than the last episode did. And this does that, and that makes me very happy. So I am pumped. I enjoyed this episode. I'm looking forward to the next one. Have you seen Stormborn? What are your thoughts on it? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter at Council of Geeks. Give a listen to the Council of Geeks podcast. I am also one half of the Punch Like a Girl podcast, both available on iTunes and Stitcher. And until next time, this council is adjourned.